Okay, do you see the video? Yes. I just go for having me. Actually, this is a great honor for me to have an opportunity to give a talk at this wonderful meeting. I'm going to talk about a brand new technique that is vertebral body sliding osteotomy for the anterior decompression of the CBO PLF. First of all, we need to think about when surgeons need anterior decompression for care patients. To know this, we should understand the K-line. The K-line is a straight line that connects the midpoints of the spinal canal at C2 and C7. If this line does not touch the ocular mass, it is K-line positive. On the contrary, if it touches the mass, then it is K-line negative. The larger pre-op is this, or the more ocular mass posterior protrudes, the more evidently K-line would change from positive to negative. In K-line negative patients, plain laminoplastic do not guarantee good neurologic outcomes. So anterior decompression should be considered first. Nevertheless, why do surgeons hesitate to do anterior decompression in severe ocular patients? That is because anterior decompression surgery for ocular is technically demanding and associated with the higher instance of perioperative complications including neurologic deterioration, pural tear, CSF leak, implant dislodgement, or shoot associates as well. It is like a sweet poison. In short, there are three major reasons why the surgeons don't like anterior decompression for CBO PLL. Number one, sometimes it tightly adheres to dura. So dissection between bass and dura easily causes dural tear and CSF leak. Number two, handling of huge ocular mass during decompression may make more cold compression, so may result in neurologic deterioration. Number three, colpectomy for ocular usually involves multi-level, so it may cause non-union and graft-related complications. Is there any good ideas to kill three birds with one stone at a time? We came up with this idea. Why should we try to remove the ocular mass directly? Instead, how about pulling out the mass anteriorly? Then surgeons would not need to directly manipulate the ocular mass at all. This technique was named Vertebral Body Sliding Osteotomy and published it in 2018. It may be a little bit complicated name to remember, so please remember it as BBSO or Sliding Osteotomy in short. This is a basic concept of sliding osteotomy. We expand the sternal canal by anterior translation of the involved vertebral bodies as well as ossified masses. After multi-level discectomy, the vertebral bodies are longitudinally cut on both sides with drill. The freely movable central fragments are anteriorly translated along with the ossified masses. Translated bodies are initially fixed with tight cage insertion then anterior to protruding part is shaped down and fixed to metal plate with screws finally. Let's take a closer look at the surgical procedures. Please enjoy the video. After, after removing the discus at the targeted levels in a witty manner, Posterior longitudinal ligament is excised at the uppermost and lowermost levels to mobilize the vertebral bodies in between. Next, targeted site of bone section 
is not using a bow. By using a two to three millimeter high speed burr, two parallel uh, longitudinal slits are made along the medial borders of the uncinate processes. Uncinate process is a landmark in this procedure, and lateral slits should be kept medial to, to the uncinate process. Since making slits lateral to uncinate process would risk vertebral artery. Hemostasis is achieved by applying bone wax and using additional hemostatic agents. After making the lateral slit and vertebral bodies become bubble. The vertebral bodies are grasped using Ellis forceps. By manipulating Ellis forceps, surgeons can translate the vertebral body anteriorly in the desired amount. Interbody spacers are inserted while main maintaining the vertebral bodies in a desired position. First, the allograft is usually inserted at the middle level, followed by uppermost and lowermost levels. After inserting the bone graft, the cast retractors are released to apply slight compression force to the operated segments. This would hold the operated segments in the desired position. Before applying anterior cervical plate, the anterior reprotruded portion of the vertebra bodies is removed by using burr and pituitary forceps. Finally, the anterior plate is applied. While inserting screws at the mobilized level, the screw holes should be tapped. Since inserting the screws to untapped mobilized level would push the vertebral bodies posteriorly and it would result in a loss of uh, decompression. Additional anterior translation of the vertebral bodies can be achieved by tightening the screws by the leg screw head. BBSO was developed in 2012 by myself and introduced in 2013 at the Cervical Spine Research Society Asia Pacific Section, first internationally. Minimum one year follow up data was also presented in the CSRS annual meeting in 2014. After accumulating enough cases, we have been publishing lots of articles regarding it. Meanwhile, a similar technique was introduced in China with a different name, but we believe the originality of this technique belongs to us. Next, let's think about this. Is VBSO really better than ACCF? To investigate the efficacy and safety of this technique, we compare the outcomes of VBSO versus those of colpectomy. In VBSO group, operation time is shorter and blood loss is less significantly. There is no neural deterioration CSF leap and graft migration associated with VBSO. Only two cases showed should associates, but no additional surgery was required. Neurological outcomes were similar between two groups. Very interestingly, post op low doses were significantly better in VBSO than ACCF group. 
According to the last results, another advantage of BVSO may be the restoration of cervical lordosis through multilevel ACDN. Then, is BVSO more helpful to restore cervical lordosis as well as sagittal alignment than colpectomy really? To look at the improvement and maintenance of cervical lordosis and sagittal alignment after BVSO, we compared the radiographic outcomes following BBSO and colpectomy. Not only C27 lordosis and segmental lordosis, but also C02 lordosis and C27 SVA improved at the final follow-up after BBSO. BBSO improved segmental cervical lordosis markedly through multi-level ACDF above and below the BBSO level. And the freeze of the vertebral body may provide more structural support. A 47-year-old man with cervical myelopathy due to OKLM and cervical kyphosis underwent BBSO at C5 and C6. In the pre-op images, the segmental lordosis between C4 and C7 was kyphotic, but it improved into lordosis after surgery. At two years after the operation, the complete union was noted, and the segmental lordosis between C4 and C7 was maintained well. Based on multilevel ACDF, BBSO improves the cervical lordosis more efficiently than colpectomy in patients with kyphosis. Also, Preserved vertebral bodies in BBSO provide structural support to prevent graft subsidence. This is a 75 year old man who suffered from cervical myelopathy with severe sagittal imbalance. We did pre reverse sliding osteotomy. As you can see, C5 and 6 vertebral bodies were translated anteriorly, so spinal corner was widened well. And kyphosis was corrected completely because the anterior column was elongated with multilevel ACDF. On CT scan images, you can see the anteriorly translated vertebral bodies and restored lordosis curvature as well. Next, what is the best indication of previous soul? Because of two kinds of characteristics of sliding osteotomy, that is rapid and direct compression of canal and better post-op sagittal alignment as well, sliding osteotomy is now most effective for the K-line negative ocular mass involving two or three disc segments. Three of axial CT images show spinal corner stenosis due to huge OPLR protruding behind C4 and C5 vertebral bodies. On pre-op lateral X-ray, these patients have mild kyphosis. So it is K-line negative. post of axial CT images show tunnel widening by anterior migration of the opera mass. On post of lateral X-ray, kyphosis is corrected into good lordosis after surgery. On pre of and post of MR images, you can see narrow spinal canal was significantly widened and kyphosis changed into good lordosis as well. There is no complication in this patient. We have published this paper this year, the title of which is same as that of this talk. This is a flow diagram of the patient selection process in this study. The surgical method was selected based on the number of ocular affected segments, cervical alignment, and modified key lysine. BBSO was indicated in the following cases. Three or less involved segments, hyperic alignment, modified key line negative, and patients with a neck pain whose visual analog scale was more than four. Actually, those are not appropriate candidates for laminoplasty.
In conclusion, VBSO is an effective surgical option for opioid induced myelopathy, demonstrating favorable neurologic neuro recovery and low dosis restoration with low complication rates. It is best indicated for kyphotic alignment, opioid with a high space of pyrimination, and opioid involved in three segments or less. How is the fusion rate after VBSO? We worried about increase in sugar associates rate because we cut the vertebral body bilaterally and make a relatively unstable central fragment. We conducted this study. We compared the fusion and substance rates of VBSO, ACDF, and perfectum. Looking at the fusion rates assessed by interspinous motion at six months and one year, VBSO group showed a significantly higher fusion rate than ACDF and perfectum groups, although there was no significant intergroup difference at the final follow-up. Similar results were achieved in the fusion rate assessed by CT scan. The mean amount of subsidence was significantly higher in the ACCF group than ACDF and VBSO groups. What does make this difference? We guess that local bone grafts inserted along the lateral slits may have promoted faster union in VBSO, and bone union would have occurred not only at multiple contact surfaces between the vertebral bodies and the interbody spacers, but also at lateral slits in a vertical direction. This is another question. Could the sliding osteotomy be utilized for the decompression of eccentrically located ocular mass? So we have developed a brand new technique so-called vertebral body rotational osteotomy, which is a modification of vertebral body sliding osteotomy. It is indicated for laterally deviated ossified mass to achieve further decompression. After making two lateral slits at the base of the uncinate process, anterior translation of the vertebral body is made along with ocular mass with gentle traction as in the previous procedure. At this point, central mobile fragment is rotated additionally until the lateral slits are closed to achieve further decompression. This slight rotation allows more efficient further decompression for eccentrically protruded ocular masses while minimizing bone loss and preserving bone contact. Next question is this. Could VBS be utilized for cervical spondylocting myopathy as well as for huge OPLF? So we reported this paper. Now we are extending the indications of this technique to the cervical spondylocting myopathy. A 59-year-old woman with cervical spondylocting myopathy showed the severe staircase deformity. The curve was semi rigid She had been suffering from rheumatoid arthritis and long-term corticosteroid use for 15 years. On bone densitometry, her T-score was minus 4.2, very severe osteoporosis. After two-level VBSO, complete decompression and kyphosis correction was achieved. If she was a patient with a normal T-score, no additional surgery would be needed at this point. However, we decided to do augmented posterior fusion to avoid complications associated with severe osteoporosis. In other words, VBSO could be useful for K-line negative cervical spondylolytic myelopathy as well and make very complicated procedures much simpler. If you take a look at pre and post of CT and MR images, you can see the appropriate corneal widening as well as complete correction of staircase kyphotic deformity. Solid bone union was achieved at post of one year. 
Thankfully, two well-known American spine surgeons, Dr. Dan Lu in Columbia University, and Dr. Chris Ames in UCSF made a warm commentary on this paper. I really appreciate it. For summarizing this talk, let's get back to this slide. Three major risks during anterior decompression of severe OPLA. Number one, severe dural adhesion. We don't need to worry about this because we do not dissect the interspace between the dura and OPLA mass at all. Next, further neurologic injury during decompression. Don't worry because we do not compress the region toward the spinal cord. Instead, we just pull out the mass forcefully. How about non-union and graft complications? Non-union rate after VBSO is significantly lower than that after ACCF. Furthermore, VBSO enhances bridging bone formation along the lower trinus leads, so promotes more active bone union. As a result, VBSO is one of the good options for anterior decompression of k line negative opioid patients. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, sir, for good presentation. Uh, there is no common sense questions. Okay. Uh, and that, and I think there is uh, some uh, learning objectives. Objectives uh, I wrote down. Maybe you can ask some of them if you have. I I will. I will write to the chat part. One by one. Okay. A question from Professor Suju. Disectomies are performed first uh, while performing vertebral body sliding osteotomy. What if the OPLL transverse the disc level? Is the OPLL at disc level taken or uh, left in place? Professor Lee. Okay, uh, above all, I, uh, I would like to thank you again for having me in this uh, wonderful meeting. Uh, the questions he gave uh, to me is very important. Uh, the, usually I cut the uh, uh, PLL, posterior longitudinal ligament and the ossified mass as well at the uppermost and lowermost level uh, completely. So if, uh, if, I don't, uh, uh, if I don't do this, uh, it is very difficult to mobilize the central fragment uh, very well. So the, if the patient has a very thin mass at the uppermost and, low, and the lowermost level, we can cut the, uh, the OPLA mass uh, very easily. However, uh, in case of the, the in case of very thick uh, ossified mass, then the, I uh, I extend the level of uh, osteotomy, uh, uh, and uh, I do uh, some more some more uh, level osteotomy. Thank you, Professor. Uh... From Jam Yujatash, uh, thank you, good presentation. Selim Bozda says that, thank you for this detailed presentation, Professor Lee. Uh, one more question from Professor Suju. While cutting the vertebral bodies from their apps, uh, is, there, is the whole uh, process done with a high-speed tour or uh, is the last bone removed with the uh, Kerrison Ronger? 
Yes, uh, that is a uh, very important uh, in the aspect of uh, uh, the surgical uh, skill. The at the at uh, first time, the, I uh, I usually use the uh, two or three millimeter uh, matured ball. It is very helpful uh, to cut the bone, and uh, uh, we can uh, see the gap uh, at uh, gap uh, made by the. Uh, the drill tip. So we can see the uh, remaining bone uh, very precisely. But these days, uh, my friends, uh, friends doctors, friends surgeons uh, do this technique with the uh, uh, ultrasound scalpel. They use the, they cut the bone uh, bilaterally using uh, ultrasound scalpel. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't have uh, ultrasound scalpel yet in my hospital, but uh, my friend doctor said uh, if they use the ultrasound scalpel, it is very easier to cut the bone. But uh, at the beginning of the bone cutting, I, uh, I, I recommend that uh, you should use the, uh, use the, uh, the conventional grill bit because uh, we need to see the gap and uh, uh, check the uh, remaining bone during the bone cutting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question is, while cutting, uh, cutting the vertebral bodies from their sides, uh, what should we pay attention to, the, to in order not to cut more medial or more lateral uh, than necessary? Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you for a good question. The, while cutting the vertebral bodies uh, from uh, both, sides, both sides, sometimes we can uh, see the, uh, we are cutting the, cutting the OPLR mass. So the, actually the, uh, the landmark of bone cutting is uh, just medial to the bilateral uncinate processes. If you, if you uh, go uh, far laterally uh, from here, you, can, you, you don't need to worry about the vertebral artery injury. Vertebral artery is uh, located just lateral to uh, uncinate process. If we uh, keep the uh, keep the cutting point uh, exactly, then the, we don't need to uh, make uh, any injury to vertebral artery. But sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, uh, surgeons are worrying about to make any injury to the vertebral artery, so the, they tend to the tend to cut the bone very immediately uh, from the uncinate process. Then you can see the some some you can you can you can have some difficulty in cutting the bone because uh, you are drilling out the uh, uh, ossified mass. So at uh, in those cases, uh, just try to the try to tilt the uh, tilt the uh, the drill tip more laterally. Then you can find the the dura mater just right to the uh, opular mass. The, the tip, uh, when I uh, meet the uh, ossified mass uh, during uh, osteotomy, then I, uh, I, I, if I see the, uh, I'm drilling out the opular mass, then the, I tip the drill tip more actually. Then the, we can cut the bone uh, very completely. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Another question uh, from Professor Suat Jambai. Uh, does the posterior longitudinal li ligament uh, allow the sufficiently by uh, pulling the corpus upwards? Uh, that is during sliding. Uh, is there a stretch? Also, is there any risk of injury to dural uh, during the manipulation uh, due to adhesion? Yes, uh, that, that is a very uh, uh, good point. Uh, actually, uh, after cutting the uh, vertebral bodies, uh, then the, when we are trying to uh, pull out the 
ventral fragments, we can feel the, some resistance uh, uh, made by uh, remaining uh, posterior longitudinal ligament. It prevents uh, too much uh, translation. So the usually we usually I don't need uh, I don't uh, I don't worry about the too much translation because it it it, it is prevented by the remaining uh, PLL. So the just to try to uh, pull out the fragment as much as possible, but uh, it can be uh, pre uh, too much uh, translation could be prevented by the resistance made by uh, remaining PLL. So the so the and uh, uh, if the patient has a very severe adhesion between dura mater and uh, uh, OPLR uh, mass. It could be very helpful to prevent uh, uh, the the uh, hematoma formation between dura and uh, dura and the opiola mass because the uh, tight adhesion prevents the accumulation of bone between the dura and opiola mass. It is uh, it is uh, it is better. It is better, and uh, severe adhesion would be uh, would be uh, would be no problem. It because uh, we just uh, put out the uh, central fragment that uh, if the patient has a very severe adhesion, it is very helpful to for us to move the uh, body without any uh, dura injury. Uh, if we do not make the too much translation, try to too much tra translation, uh, we don't know, we don't worry, we don't need to worry about the dura dura uh, tear. It is very safe. Uh, this technique is very safe to control the uh, adhesion. If uh, if we don't use this technique, the before uh, uh, long long time before the long time ago, I uh, usually uh, try to limb the opiate mass completely using a colpectomy or a, a protein technique. At that time, uh, the when we after we after I make the uh, uh, central uh, central decompression, it is very uh, it is very difficult to uh, control the uh, the float, floating uh, ocular mass. But uh, if we use the uh, BBSO technique, we can control the uh, central fragment uh, as we want. So the we don't need to worry about the, the make uh, any uh, additional injury to the uh, cord or the or, uh, or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ahmed Yardım says that. Thanks for your useful presentation. Uh, Yunus Aydın is here. Uh, he has a uh, one comment and one questions. Professor Suju, uh, uh, can you read? Okay. Uh, he says, Congratulations, congratulations. This technique is very useful for the cases uh, who have assimilated Dura with OPLL. I do K hole uh, vertebrectomy uh, technique, and uh, I had additional neuro neurological deficits uh, taught the they uh, regressed after surgery, uh, but right after surgery is it is not uh, accepted easily. Some cases OPLL extends to foramen. How can you handle uh, such cases? Oh uh, yes, uh, uh, I have uh, so many uh, OPLL patients these days, but but uh, usually the title of the region is located. Uh, uh, at the uh, central part. So if the patient has a uh, foraminal stenosis at, uh, in, their, in that area, there is no uh, severe adhesion. So the, in those cases, I try to make uh, additional uh, uh, foraminotomy uh, to decompress the neural foramen. Uh, fortunately, I do, I have never experienced uh, any severe adhesion around the uh, neural foramen. We uh, we are 
uh, we should be very careful to handle the central central part of Opia, but uh, in the Rachua area, there is no uh, there is no uh, severe adhesion. In in my experience. Thank you, Professor, for your answers. Uh, one question from Professor Suju: When putting in putting the scripts on the plate, do we do uh, the topping along? the entire screw lens or less? Yes. Uh, uh, as I, uh, I show you uh, during my presentation, the, the tip to prevent the uh, uh, reduction loss, the so-called uh, to prevent uh, we push back the push back the central fragment uh, again. Uh, I uh, drilled, I drilled the uh, vertebral body and uh, tap uh, always, tap always. So the, the tapping uh, step is not, uh, it, it is not necessary uh, uh, as same as the uh, screw length. I just tap the, uh, the end, only the entry of the screw holes. Then the, we can make a leg screw pack during a uh, screw screw insertion. So leg screw making leg screw pack is very important to, to prevent the vertebral body move backward and uh, the, to get the additional uh, additional tra anterior translation during a uh, screw insertion. So just to tap the uh, uh, screw hole at the uh, at the uh, the, uh, the Entry entry side, just the uh, uh, entry side. Uh, it it is uh, uh, it is that is enough. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Suju. Uh, Say secondly, it is necessary to put uh, two screws in each vertebra in vertebral body sliding osteotomy, or does a midline single uh, screw plate do the same? Mm, two uh, two screws are uh, two screws are better. Two screws are better. So if we uh, cut the bone very widely, then the, we can fix the central fragment with two screws. But in some cases, uh, we uh, are fear uh, of uh, making a uh, vertebral artery vertebral artery injury. So the Sometimes we make the uh, central fragment very narrow. In that case, uh, just one uh, screw fixation uh, would be uh, would be good. Uh, we have uh, we uh, we have uh, we don't have uh, experience that uh, uh, any uh, any uh, should associate these days. So the just one screw fixation uh, could be uh, very helpful. Thank. You. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, there is no comment and questions. I would like to give floor uh, to Professor Hasan Kavi Suju. Uh, I want to thank again to Professor Lee. It was a, a very useful uh, lecture for us. And the uh, videos were uh, was uh, were very informative. Uh, perfect. Uh, I want to thank you again, Professor Lee. Thank you so much to accepting thank you. our offer to speak. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.